I'm Harrison Graham. He's Tom Downey. You're watching NFL Daily live here on Chat Sports. Let's jump into the latest NFL news and rumors. Lots to get into, Tom. Uh, we'll get into Jamal Adams in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about the latest surrounding Antonio Brown. And Jeremy Fowler says that it, it's a unique case for Antonio Brown. There is no guarantee he plays in 2020, which, which should not be a surprise because it's Antonio Brown. Because the, the investigation into his personal conduct is still ongoing. This, this is now approaching several months. It, it, it's, it'll be a year probably before it's decided, I think. And the NFL has not yet made up its mind because there's multiple incidences involving Antonio Brown. And that leads to a bunch of uncertainty. I kind of wonder if the NFL is taking its time because they're not convinced the team's going to sign Antonio Brown. So this isn't exactly at the top of its priority exactly. list, but it's kind of twofold because mm -hmm. a team may not sign him until they know the, that these issues are resolved. Because mm -hmm. if the NFL says, hey, he's hit with an eight gamer, <laughs> probably not going to sign him. So mm -hmm. uh, you got those issues to deal with. But uh, his future, Tom, is very much in doubt. Yeah, so we'll see what ends up happening with Antonio Brown. There is one team that might be a fit that we'll get into here in a little bit. But if you can get 2018 or 2017 or pretty much any year except 2019 Antonio Brown, it's a no-brainer. He was the best receiver in the NFL and then quickly, quickly fell apart. It's frustrating when athletes do things like this, Tom, because you're talking about a guy who's on a Hall of Fame trajectory and still could get in even if he never plays another down. That's how good he's been uh, through the first half or so of his career. But it'll be fascinating to see if A.B. gets another shot in the NFL. So let us know, would you want your team to sign Antonio Brown type AB for yes, type FAB for no? Mitchell Wren's not on today, but we're still doing FAB for you guys in the comment section. It is, of course, depending on which team you prefer. I lean more towards FAB just because I think I can get, I was not as good receiver production, but close enough to it at a far lesser headache in inducing player. Well, what about the Seattle Seahawks? Would they be one of the few teams that could make some sense for A.B.? Maybe. Uh, I want to emphasize this part first from John Clayton. It would not happen until late July or August. This, so this is not anything that's going to happen overnight or anytime soon. But apparently, per Clayton, Russell Wilson would love to add Antonio Brown to the team. And Seattle Harrison could use a new receiver. They don't have a lot of depth beyond their top two of Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. Yeah, they signed Philip Dorsett. You know, who's serviceable as your wide receiver three, but, eh, you know, you'd rather him kind of be your fourth guy as a rotation speedster. You bring in A.B., all of a sudden, if his head screwed on straight, you're talking about one of the best receiving cores in the NFL oh, yeah. because Tyler Lockett, extremely underrated. I think he's a fringe top 10, top 15 mm -hmm. wide receiver in the league. Metcalf showed us a lot as a rookie, especially mm -hmm. as a deep threat. You mix in Antonio Brown there. Uh, that is uh, that is really, uh, really good on the depth chart. David Moore, Freddie Swain, Philip Dorsett, those aren't number three guys. No. Now, the Seahawks have enough tight ends to, to, to make up for it, but, I mean, Lockett, Metcalf, and A.B., I've long wanted Seattle to let their top five, top five, your top three quarterback just sling it more. Let Brown do it with Wilson. Like that, that that's a dynamic op option hey, there. They brought in Carlos Hyde. I wish you were in the office when uh, that happened because they keep I on signing running backs. We'll see if they'll have interest in Seattle. John Clayton reports that uh, Russell Wilson would like to see it happen. What we would like to see happen is A, for you guys to subscribe here at Chat Sports, and B, once you do so, to enable notifications. Here's the deal if you're on desktop, Tom, and let me know if I'm doing this right. After you hit subscribe, you hit that little bell, you go up to the top right of your screen, mm -hmm. that's where your inbox is. Yes. You'll be notified every single time a video goes up on mm -hmm. the channel. If you're on mobile, it's on the tab right next yep. to, to, the, to the current one that you are on. It's called your inbox. Every single video that goes up, you will be notified. So turn on notifications after you subscribe. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Go ahead and join the Noti Gang. All right, I teased it earlier. The Jamal Adams trade rumors, they continue to circulate, Tom. They will not go away until the Jets reach an extension with Jamal Adams. And if I learned anything from the Odell Beckham trade, even then they might not end up going away. Yeah. The Jets keep saying they want to keep Jamal Adams, but they want to wait on a deal. They want to do what Mac and Aaron Donald did and, and, and let them play their first four years, then give them the extension, not after the first three when they become eligible. 
Adams wants to get paid right now. I don't really blame him because he has been maybe not the best young safety, but he's certainly one of in a pretty good debate between, I think, Derwin James, Nick Patrick Christ, some others in there as well. He's awesome. If I'm the Jets, Harrison, I just pay him. He's really good. I will say, yeah, like, I, I, I'm with you, but I also think that, okay, you're the Jets. Mm -hmm. You got two more years here. This isn't, do. this isn't a quarterback like a Patrick Mahomes where you're saying, we just got to pay him now. Otherwise, it's going to cost $50 million per year in two years. They have the luxury of time. So I, I can understand that they don't want to just, mm -hmm. you know, fit, you know, just feed into Jamal Adams' demands, per mm -hmm. se, if he's asking for something outrageous. But the thing on the flip side is, is what's frustrating if you're an Adams or a Jets fan mm -hmm. is that he has never really expressed interest in wanting to leave. Despite comments from Adam Gase and the organization, he would like to stay there. He just wants to get taken care he, of. He wants to get the bag, which I understand. Now, the latest updates here is that the Jets, they don't want to trade him, but they will listen if teams call for a trade, which did not go over well with Adams at the deadline. That was certainly a big factor in the whole, well, maybe he wants to be traded now. I think I think the Jets pay him, but just do it right now. You can give him 15 million a year. Contract's not that hard. And if you do it now, he's not going to be the highest paid team because Derwin and Minka will surpass him in like a year. So, like, I, yeah, it's a tough I don't one. Get it. Predict for us where will Jamal Adams play in 2020? I definitely think he starts week one as a New York Jet. I think if the start of the season is a disaster and they're yeah. one and four, I, one and five I, I trade deadline, that, that could, could change that. things. But I'm pretty confident he'll be a Jet to start the season. What I'm also confident in is you're not going to find a better deal anywhere for Nike NFL jerseys. Tom, this is the best deal out there. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. By the way, some of the rookie jerseys they've, are at this price now. They've added a bunch of new ones and some new players, too. Gronk had not been on there. Now he's on there. Joe Burrow. They've got Aaron Donald. The new Rams ones, if that's the route you guys want to end up going. Heck, They've even got C.D. Lamb jerseys mm. in there now. Not every rookie, but a lot of the top ones are on there. Of course, that link will, will sort by the most the top selling. So you'll see Tua, you'll see Lamb, you'll see Burrow. But whatever team you're a fan of, they've got jerseys on there for you guys. That's chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. It'll be in the comments and in the description. All right, let's go to a George Kittle rumor here, Tom. Uh, I think this will be news soon because uh, the 49ers don't want to let him go. An extension appears to be in the works. I think this makes sense for San Francisco and for Kittle. Now, the problem here, and I guess the sticker shock side of it, it's going to be a lot. The The ESPN report that was there said the sweet spot here might be four-year deal, plus you have the extra year, so it'll be really a five-year total deal, Okay. 17 to $18 million per year which is a lot for a tight end. In fact, that is not just record setting, that is record shattering money for a tight end in today's NFL. Yeah, and look, here's the deal. Uh, George Kittle, you know, a couple of other guys, Travis Kelsey, you could throw mm -hmm. in there as well. Uh, they're not just tight ends. These are basically wide receivers yeah. with, with what they bring to modern NFL offenses. And I think that's why it's gonna be worth it in the end, especially in San Francisco's case, because they don't really have a number one receiver. You know who their number one receiver is? It's George Kittle. So yeah. they're going. Uh, so if you think of it that way, what do top NFL one, uh, number one receivers get now? 18, 19, 20 million dollars. If you can get Kittle for 17, it's a pretty good deal for a team that doesn't yeah. have a lot at the wide receiver position. Uh, his numbers went down, quote unquote, in 2019. Although I will make note, Kittle actually did miss two games with an injury. And oftentimes, the best pit player at, at a particular position isn't the highest paid player yep. because that's just how contracts work. But with Kittle, I think that would be the case, Harrison. Yeah, absolutely. You kind of look at it like right now with Patrick Mahomes. If, mm -hmm. if he gets a new deal, he's deserving of the exactly. highest paid contract because he is the best quarterback. Whereas at tight end, it's really just down to these two. So if Kittle, Sorry, reset, if, if Kittle resets the market, that's mm -hmm. certainly worthwhile. But let us know who you think the best tight end is. Type TK for Travis Kelsey. Type GK for George Kittle. And if you look at the highest paid tight ends, you mentioned it, Tom, it would be record shattering. Uh, yeah, 10 million to 17, that would be quite a jump. And that Kelsey contract was signed several years ago. The cap has gone up. The NFL could continue to go up. Hunter Henry's on the franchise tag right now. is actually the highest paid tight end in the NFL with that kind of unusual quirk with how the franchise tag worked out this year. So you end up looking, okay, well, it's more of a receiver contract. 
he wouldn't be a quite a top five highest paid receiver. Maybe he ends up tying Beckham or Hill. We'll see what the contract structure ends up looking like. A.J. Green's tag is a little over $18 million. Kittle's awesome. I, I know it's expensive. I don't mind paying him that figure because he might be just their best player on the team and that, outright. And again, everything is circumstance, right? Like, is any team on the free agent market going to throw $18 million at George Kittle? Maybe, maybe not. Probably. But if you're the 49ers, you've got to keep this You guy. can't let him at the open market. No. I, I think there would be a significant bidding war and for And either him. way, he, like you said, not as he, only is he your best offensive weapon, He's your best. Uh, he's your best uh, player, probably in general, especially on offense. So TK for Kelsey or GK for Kittle. All right, Everson Griffin rumors continue to circulate as one of the top free agent players continues to remain available. Tom, could he be heading to Arizona? I think it makes some sense, especially if the Cardinals really do want an upgrade across from Chandler Jones when it comes to pass rushing and getting after the quarterback. Now, the other update here was that Griffin has interest from multiple teams. But he wants to take visits, which kind of can't do right now. And that yep. contributed to him not signing. Plus, I think Clowney being unsigned is kind of a, a trickle-down effect of the top defensive ends, at least those who weren't re-signed. Look, he's made the Pro Bowl for the past five years. Not the best 2018 as he missed some time dealing with some personal issues. Yep. But he's going to get you eight sacks. And that carries value in the NFL. Yeah, and the thing about Griffin, and I, I, quite frankly, I thought we'd see this more when free agency hit, knowing, you know, the big C issue teams not being able to travel and visit, mm -hmm. you know, organizations. Uh, I thought more guys would wait. Yeah. Who knows how long Griffin would have to wait, though. That's the thing. We don't yeah. really have a clear picture on that. Is he willing to wait until a training camp that gets going? We'll see what happens, but several teams should be interested, and he would be a great fit on the Cardinals, who have already had a fantastic uh, offseason. You pair him with Chandler Jones coming on, off the edge. You got Kennard as well. That's pretty good. Yeah, and in the 3-4 front, the outside linebackers are the edge rushers, so you'd see Everson Griffin not be a defensive end, more so of an outside linebacker, but the role is the same. The job is to go get the quarterback. Those guys don't drop into coverage very much. No. Griffin and Jones would be a big boost there. You, and then on, even like on your dime nickel sets when you're using four front guys, be it Jones, Griffin, and some combo of Allen, Peters, and Phillips, probably Peters and Phillips, that's actually a, a pretty promising front for Arizona. Yep. Help them get some pressure. Yeah, so which team will Ever Griffin, or Everson Griffin sign with? Go ahead and predict for us. By the way, a little teaser. Yeah. Tom's got a video planned for you guys coming up on Wednesday. Yeah. Ever, Everson Griffin destination so hopefully he doesn't sign before then uh if he doesn't we'll do a different video for yeah, you we'll do a different if he signs we'll do a different video but <laughs> that's because we do videos all the time anyway so yes. go ahead and subscribe youtube.com slash chat sports tv share that link with a friend and help us out our goal is to hit 200,000 subscribers asap we're at like 181k right now so go ahead hit that big red button and share that link down below with a friend we're doing videos every single day all right, Devontae Freeman, this is an interesting one, Tom. As we'll, uh, we'll Do you want to take it? Because you, you got some thoughts on it, and I agree with you. <laughs> well, this is just so bad. Oh, <laughs> a Devontae Freeman's willing to sit out this year if a team doesn't sign him. Well, your career's over then because you've been bad the last couple of years and you can't stay healthy. I'm getting the shh sign in my ear from the producers behind the scene. Uh, Alicia, mm. I, I'm breaking the mics here at Chat Sports. This is so bad, though. Like, it's bad enough that Cam Newton might might go this route after missing most of last year. It's even worse for an aging running back who, who has shot knees. Right. Look, Carlos Hyde, I think, wanted more money than what he ended up getting. He ended up settling for the Seahawks, and that, I think he got paid a decent amount there. I think Freeman wanted Melvin Gordon money. <laughs> he hasn't been Melvin Gordon. Well, I guess maybe 2019 Melvin Gordon, but Freeman averaged 3.6 yards per carry last year. He was hurt 2018. I, I don't know why teams would be willing to guarantee a big role and big money to Freeman. Like, it, it doesn't make sense. So, if he's not getting the offers he wants, I don't think it's going to suddenly emerge for him. He's clearly lost a step. Yeah. You watch him pre-knee pre, pre -knee injury, post-knee injury, not the same guy, not the same explosiveness. Uh, the offense stayed mm -hmm. the same in Atlanta, and he hasn't been as good. Yeah. So, I mean, look, and this happens to NFL running backs. Yeah. That's why your theory, more often than not, is mm -hmm. the way to go. 
don't pay running backs. <laughs> like, and Devontae Freeman, look, if he wants to, uh, you know, if he wants to cash a, a couple more checks, you better take what you can get because skipping a year is not an option. And th this is not to make it seem like Freeman's a bad back by any means. No. Draftport mentioned the Eagles is a fit for him. I think it'd be a great number two in Philadelphia. Absolutely. And if, if you want to give him four-ish million over on one-year deal, okay. I'm fine with that. He can be a rotational piece behind Miles Sanders. I think it's a great idea, Philly, and for Freeman. But if he if he wants six, seven, or or five or more, like I am sorry, it's just not what we saw last year. Freeman. So take the one year deal, prove it, and then try and cash in next year. Yeah, look, it's not 2016 anymore. Like it's not. you know, five six years ago, I remember this guy was one of the top fantasy football running backs in the league when he mm -hmm. bursted onto the scene because of how good of a rusher and a receiver he was, but. Mm -hmm. The explosive plays just have not been there, so I'll be curious to see where he ends up in 2020.